Hey Vision Chasers, it's Dr. Bird here with another social studies lesson for you today. Now, today's lesson is not a very joyful one to revisit because unfortunately it involves the death of over 6 million people. And I'm talking about the Jewish Holocaust. And before I get to that, I want to take a moment just to speak on something. I've been getting some uh, a lot of uh, replies on some posts that I've done about negative events in history. I'm specifically, I'm talking about uh, how Hawaii became a state, what were the Jim Crow laws, and how westward expansion affected the Native Americans. And I, um, some of the comments, I, I just really appreciate people engaging and, and taking the time to make the comments and express their feelings. And I just want to add that uh, one of the things that I tell my students when it comes to these these kinds of things because uh, people are imperfect and there are some evil people out there and um, we see that in history and you're seeing some of it now as well. Uh, what I tell my students is this. I tell my students that yes those horrible things that they did happen but that is not for we don't teach that and that's not for you to feel ashamed uh, or to feel guilty um, or to even try to atone for some of those negative things that, that have been done and by atone I mean to, to make up for. Um, instead what I tell my students is this. I, I tell my students that um, if you want to try to help to reduce the, the hatred, the racism that exists today, then the best, I think one of the best things you can do is treat everyone, everyone that you come in contact with, with love and respect. I think that is a, that's, that's a wonderful message to, to pass along to everybody that you meet. You treat everyone with love, respect, and then you teach that to your future children and the world's going to be a much, much, much better place uh, for them. So keep that in mind. Yes, there's going to be negative events in history, but I definitely, I, I pray and I hope that you don't feel in any way convicted uh, or feel that you were the cause of that and you have to feel ashamed and, and try to atone for that in, in any way. No, that is, that is far from the truth. What, what we do as teachers in, in the classroom, we're just, we're teaching you history, this is what happened, and uh, I truly believe, especially for the negative aspects of history, um, if we can learn from that, then we can keep from repeating it. And again, going back to what I said about treating people with love and respect, we can reduce the, the hate and racism uh, that ex exists in our societies today. That being said, let's talk about Anne Frank. The private thoughts of 13-year-old Anne Frank have, have been read by millions of people around the world. Her diary was written during the early 1940s. Now, for those of you who don't know, a, a diary is uh, simply a, a book or a notebook in which you write down your thoughts and your personal feelings and, and perhaps things that, that happened at that particular point in time during your life. Anne Frank was uh, one of six million Jewish people who died during the Jewish Holocaust in the 1930s and 40s. And her diary simply tells a story of how she and her family were able to successfully hide from the Nazis for a period of time during World War II. So Anne Frank, as you see here, she grew up in Frankfurt, Germany. Her father, his name was Otto, he actually served in World War I for the German army. Now Frankfurt was, um, this city was rather peaceful towards Jewish people as they even had a Jewish mayor in the early 1930s. Now unfortunately, the loss in World War I and the Great Depression made it really bad for a lot of people in Germany. Uh, as a matter of fact, 25% of all people living in Frankfurt were unemployed at this time. And this made it easier, this made it easy for Adolf Hitler to rise to power. People were hurting so much and they were looking for someone to blame. 
and Hitler gave them someone to blame. He basically said that all your troubles would go away if one group of people would go away. And he was talking about the Jewish people. Now, Jewish people weren't immediately sent to concentration camps. As a matter of fact, things started out rather slowly. Um, at first, Adolf Hitler would order all books to be burned that had ideas that went against Hitler's Nazi party. Uh, also, Jews were unable to hold a political office. Uh, Jewish students were also segregated and non-Jewish Germans were not allowed to do business with Jewish owned businesses. So you, you see that that separation start to happen. And then the Gestapo, the secret, this police force, they would enforce these rules that many people were scared to oppose. Now, Otto Frank, he realized that things were going to get worse. Uh, and at this time, the Jewish people, they didn't have a homeland to go to. And so at this time, the Jewish people, they're scattered all throughout the world. And remember, at this time, Israel did not exist. So Otto moved his family to Aiken, Germany, where his wife's family lived. And he found a job in Amsterdam, which borders Germany. Now let's talk a little bit more about Anne Frank. Anne Frank was, uh, she was slim. She had dark brown hair. She had dimples. She enjoyed being the center of attention uh, by making people laugh. She had many friends as well. She had a sister named Margot. Anne and Margot were different in many ways. At times, Anne Frank talked too much in her math class which earned her extra homework. However, I do love this about Anne Frank. I love this so much. She was very much interested in history. I'm sure I would have enjoyed having her in my class. She was also known as a person who said what was on her mind. Now that can also get you in some trouble. And she found herself in trouble a, t a time or two. Uh, additionally, she enjoyed performing in school plays and, and doing imitations of people. And it was actually on her 13th birthday that she was presented with a diary from her father. Now, by the late 1930s, things would go from bad to worse for Jews living in Europe. Jewish, people, Jewish students, they could no longer attend school. Additionally, uh, mobs of people would attack Jewish homes, uh, their businesses, and, and synagogues. And by synagogues, I'm talking about their place of worship, their church. Now, after these attacks, there was so much broken glass on the ground that the attack became known as Kristallnacht, or Night of Broken Glass. And these are some famous pictures of the, the events during that night and the aftermath of the night of broken glass. Now it's at this time that Otto decides to move his family into hiding. He realizes that people are being taken off to concentration camps and they're never being heard from again. So what he does is he decides to hide his family in a storage room above his workplace in Amsterdam. Now this, the place where they were hidden was called the Annex. And uh, some of his co-workers were kind enough to, uh, to risk their lives to supply Otto and his family with food and clothing. Now, additionally, the Franks were living with another Jewish family in the annex and the other family, their last name was Van Don. So just imagine this. I imagine Otto Frank realizing that his, he and his family could be killed simply for being Jewish, not hurting anyone, but they're, they're just Jewish and they are, there's just so much hatred being levied toward them because they're Jewish. And he realized that, the, that they could lose their lives for this. And so imagine um, Anne Frank and her family putting on several layers of clothing uh, to hide the fact that they were actually moving and not being able to say goodbye to her friends. I couldn't imagine how difficult that may have been for her. And so now they're living in this cramped space and to pass the time, guess what Anne Frank did? She wrote in her diary. On 
July 11th, 1942, she writes, I'm very afraid that we shall be discovered and be shot. Now the annex was a tight space for a total of eight people. It was not easy for everyone to get along. Anne had a little difficulty fitting in with the other family. Anne tried to make the hiding place home by hanging pictures of movie stars on her bedroom wall. And I'm sure many of you out there can relate to Anne Frank, even though she lived during the 1930s and 40s. And here's what also made things difficult for them. They couldn't wear their shoes during the day. Now, I'm sure you're saying, oh, Dr. Burr, that's not too bad. But here's the other thing. They couldn't flush the toilet during working hours, which were from 8.30 to 5.30, because remember, they're living in an attic or storage room above, the, above Otto Frank's workplace. So there are people down there working. And if they hear that toilet flush, then they're gonna give away their hiding spot. So during the day, they had to live in total silence. And at night, uh, Anne Frank could hear gunshots outside. Um, the positive thing at night, she was able to also go downstairs and, and look out the window at night through a small opening in the curtain. And so that was something that her and her sister very much looked forward to. Now, as time went on, it became even more challenging for people to help supply them with food, water, clothing. The Nazis were closely watching everyone. And on March 14th, 1944, she writes about their supplies. She says, our supper today consists of hash made from kale, which has been preserved in a barrel. It's incredible how kale can stink when it's a year old. The smell in the room is a mixture of bad plums, strong preservations, and rotten eggs. But there was hope as the Allies were advancing on Berlin and freeing conquered territories. And on June 6, 1944, Anne writes, could we be granted victory this year, 1944? We don't know yet, but hope is revived within us. It gives us fresh courage and makes us strong again. Now this date was the same date as the Allied invasion of Normandy, uh, which marks the beginning of taking France back from Nazi Germany. But this hope would never be realized. It was three days after her last entry on August 4th, 1944, that Anne Frank and her family are discovered and arrested. Anne and her sister Margot are separated from their family. The two sisters were starving and sick at the concentration camp. Typhus, uh, which is a disease, a very deadly disease, uh, swept through the camp uh, where they were held. Margot would die first. Anne was not told of her sister's death because uh, she was very sick as well. Uh, and just a few days later, Anne died in March of 1945 and out of the eight people who hid in the annex only Otto Frank would survive and after much thought Otto published Anne's diary um, and it was positively received by all that read it it was turned into a play and then it would be turned into a movie Otto Frank would pass away at the age of 90 in 1980 and we are so grateful that because of him his daughter's voice lives on. Well, that's our social studies lesson for the day. Please check the Vision Chasers website for more tips and tools to help you as you chase your vision of success. Additionally, there is a worksheet available. Uh, you can download that so you can learn more about Anne Frank and her diary. I thank you so much for watching and until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision.